Pittsburgh is a blue collar sports city with a lot of bridges, but is the food here any good? That's what we set out to find. You see this stretch, you got it. This fits so good, you flung it. How you get so iconic? I see you better. When it comes to the food scene, Pittsburgh isn't exactly as well known as Philadelphia. But I do feel like there are some hidden spots in the area that might be worthwhile to check out. So we're gonna do the eating for you and tell you what we recommend. We're gonna do some eating. We're gonna do some eating. Come on and show it to me. Like with most of our videos, we always start with coffee. So we hit up Defer based on a recommendation from one of you, which by the way, the recommendations that you all gave us for this trip were some of the best we've ever had. Right now we're in the strip district, kind of just walking around and exploring, seeing all the different shops in the area. Now, normally for our videos, this guy comes up with a full itinerary, a list of things to do, every stop that we're gonna make. This time we're gonna play it by ear, wing a little bit more, and take you along for the ride. The Strip District is one of the most historical neighborhoods in Pittsburgh. If you're looking for food in the area, this is a great place to start. Peace, love, and little donuts. There are locations pretty much all over the East Coast now, but the location right here is the original. This hippie little donut shop is one of the best donut shops in Pittsburgh. There's got to be at least 40 different unique flavors to choose from. We just went with a half dozen, but there were so many others we wanted to try too. Oreo. Birthday cake. Dirt. <laughs> Dirt? Dirt. There's a little worm. M&M. &M. Fruity Pebbles. Magically delicious. No, you guys say like a leprechaun. <laughs> the magically delicious. <laughs> so not the healthiest breakfast, but for such small donuts, they actually were pretty filling. Not that it's surprising, but they all taste like cereal. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. Which one was your favorite? As a surprise to no one, birthday cake. Because birthday cake flavored anything is usually my favorite. What did you just ask me? What is a pierogi? I do not know what a pierogi is either. I don't know either. But I feel like during this trip, we're gonna learn and we're probably gonna try one. So we did learn what they were, but sadly, and don't hate us for this, we didn't plan it out right and ended up not having enough time to find some. We're headed to church for our next stop, but not quite what you might be thinking. <laughs> Church Brew Works used to be St. John the Baptist Church. Today, what used to be the altar is where they make the beer. And you can sit in the pews for dining chairs. This is actually the second church brewery we've been to as we went to the Ministry of Brewing in Baltimore a while back. beers we hit the road again stopped in at the chalk festival and found this amazing little family-owned restaurant back to the future has been at this location for about a year now and actually they're getting ready to open another location the menu is extensive to say the least but the food is actually good Very flavorful for a plain burger. We mentioned the sheer number of bridges there are in Pittsburgh, you know, but there's just something a little magical about this one. So Pamela's Diner is one of the most known breakfast spots in Pittsburgh. What they serve here is specialty style crepe pancakes and a lot of just great breakfast food. Being fully transparent, it was okay. It's not the best breakfast we ever had, but it was decent. I think I'd still recommend it because it's like a popular spot, but it was okay. It was okay. 
it was okay. <laughs> and DeLuca's Diner probably rivals Pam's for the best diner in the city. You can't miss this diner in the heart of the Strip District because it's the only one with a giant chicken on the roof. Tony and I kept going back and forth on whether we wanted to eat at Permanti Brothers or not. It is an iconic Pittsburgh restaurant, but we honestly have not had a lot of luck with those historic iconic restaurants in the cities that we visit. So we're gonna skip this one this time. Plus everyone that we asked if it was worth visiting said it was overrated. After breakfast, we traveled over to the North End to check out the Mattress Factory and Randy Land. So Randy Land was cool and it was free, which we love, um, but now I'm hungry, so it's time for Tony to feed me. And we are actually going to go to a lunch stop that was recommended by one of you. Oak Hill was hands down the best restaurant that we ate at in Pittsburgh. Not only was the staff super friendly, but the food was absolutely incredible. I got the number 26, which is fried chicken breast with kimchi. This was amazing. The chicken was so tender and the kimchi added a nice little kick. <laughs> and I got the all-American burger, super juicy and the best french fries. These are the best kind of fries. Pin Brewing is the oldest and largest craft brewing in Pittsburgh, and it specializes in German-style beers. And it's woman-owned. You may or may not have noticed me hobbling in this video, and that's because I sprained my ankle trying to blow on a giant dandelion. I pulled up the whole plant. <laughs> There's a Sharpie. We don't need to talk about that right now, but marching on, I wanted tacos. Condado has a lot of taco options, but I recommend any taco with the secret shell. <laughs> On our final day in Pittsburgh, we walked around the downtown area looking for another breakfast spot. Full disclosure, our last day in Pittsburgh is on Memorial Day, so a lot of things are closed and rightfully so. But right now we're in Market Square. We're getting ready to go to City Works. This wasn't on our list, but the building looks pretty cool, so we're gonna check it out. We went to City Works for breakfast, but this spot looks like a great spot to catch a game or to drink lots of beer. All the food was rock and roll themed. I got the Sweet Child of Mine French Toast, which was surprisingly delicious. It was crispy on the outside, but soft in the middle. It tasted like something you get at a fair. breakfast flatbread called easy like Sunday morning. But the best part about my breakfast was definitely the mimosa flight. Pittsburgh surprised us in a lot of ways. Yeah, this trip we decided to steer clear from a lot of those classically Pittsburgh restaurants and took some of your recommendations, but also tried some newer restaurants as well. And I think it paid off. We ate pretty good this trip. Yeah, we ate great. Uh, uh, 